Hi, my name is Romaine Johnson. I'm a pediatric allergologist at UT Southwestern Medical Center as well as Children's Health here in Dallas, Texas. And I'm going to talk to you about repair of a type 1 laryngeal cleft. So this is a three-year-old child who got recurrent aspiration and previously diagnosed type 1 cleft. Her symptoms resolved with a prolarin injection but now her symptoms have returned after the ejection resorbed and we're going to go ahead and repair her definitively. This is a pretty fast video, but this is what the initial laryngoscopy and tracheostomy look like. Besides the type 1 cleft, pretty normal airway. So you probe the cleft in order to ensure the diagnosis. In this sense, we felt like she did have an interretinoid notch that was consistent with the type 1 cleft. Uh, clefts typically are classified by the Benjamin and English system. There are four types. We we're going to focus on type 1. Here are some of the common signs and symptoms of type 1 clefts. Pneumonias, strider, chronic cough, feeding difficulties, etc. This child had feeding difficulties, chronic cough, and recurrent aspiration. Once again, looking at the cleft, getting ready to repair it. We like to use a lend home to suspend the patient we think it provides a pretty good view. And then we also use the laser to denude the area. So here we're denuding the interretinoid area, sort of very fast video just to give you an idea of what we do. Uh, after you denude the area, then you use suture to close it, uh, typically two or three sutures. Uh, you want the sutures to face the pharyngeal side. Uh, so uh, here's a pretty fast video. Um, this video here shows a little bit better view, slow it down, and as you can see, we're using um, alligators here to drive the needle, but there are various instruments that you can use. Once you grab the, the stitch, and uh, now you're going to go ahead and tighten it down outside of view. With, uh, we just use a simple uh, surgeon's knot, and then to help push the knot into place, we use a knot pusher, pusher, which is a pretty standard instrument in many of the laryngeal trays that you can purchase. Uh, once again, emphasizing that the knot needs to stay on the pharyngeal side uh, in order to uh, ensure that the, the knot is not irritating the airway. Here comes the knot pusher. Typically, you'll have an assistant to help make sure the suture is taut as you secure the stitch. And you can see the suture is tightened. Knot's going to be on the pharyngeal side. Now you perform a laryngo, uh, sorry, a supraglottoplasty if needed by releasing the AE folds. Here we're going to release the AE folds. The right fold has already been released. Now we're going to release the left fold. And this is just to help make sure that the child doesn't develop strider post repair. Having sharp scissors really helps if you can find some. Now here's our final result. We did our AE fold release. We've secured our suture on the pharyngeal side. And this child did quite well. Uh, aspiration resolved after this procedure.